Welcome, welcome, welcome to Soulful Sunday. Okay, it sounds right. Come on now, drum roll. Oh, yeah. yes. I think there's something to narrowing down that, that sister circle. Welcome to Soulful Sundays, where we are bringing you soul-inspired conversations. I am your host, Lena Anthony, and this is my beautiful co-host, Judy Johnson. Hey, yo. <laughs> and my other beautiful co-host, Raquel Ballou. Welcome, guys. Hey, hey. <laughs> this episode, we are talking about mom, wife, boss. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You see my dad? Hey, I'm going wrong, but you know what I mean. <laughs> There are many hats and many functions, but how do we balance it all? Yes. But well, before well, we get into, look at you, I'm ready, y'all. I love it. I love it. Cheers, Cheers to y'all. this new episode. Soulful Sunday. Happy hey, Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Let's jump into it. Let's yes. jump in. Because I think we're all a mom. Yep. A wife. Yes. And a boss. Oh, yeah. But I just want to say, for those of you who are single, this episode still pertains to you because I believe that everyone in some form deserves to be a wife. Yes. And you will get there. Be patient with the process. Yes. And if you don't desire to be a wife, this might be some advice that you want to kick to your friends or your family. Oh, you're still a boss. I mean, you can relate to something right. out of wife, mom, or boss, right. if not all three. Right. And we're all nurturers by nature anyways. And when it comes to just having that spirit of parental, we take care of so much. Yeah. We yeah. have so many babies, so many projects, so many things that we work on that we really do look as children. Yeah. Yeah. So let's jump into a question that I thought would be very interesting. What's that? What, where did that desire come from to be a mom, a wife, and a boss? Disney Channel. <laughs> <laughs> very true. Barbie, Mattel. Yes. It was like nonstop Barbie. I had the Barbie doll that had a pregnant belly. Oh, you better stop. That pop the belly open. I had and baby the baby was in there. Baby Girl, born. my daughter baby has born? baby alive. I just bought it for, for Wait, is Christmas. Wait, that's the second edition from Baby Born? I think so. Now the, it was born and now it's alive. Is that like Cabbage Patch Kids? <laughs> No, girl, this one does stuff. This one actually, like, has a diaper, it poops, it's like, it's basically, what? it's crazy, but it's true. Since we have been born into this world, my daughter is three years old and she's changing diapers. So she's already learning how to be a mom. Exactly. Wow. She's already taking care of something. That's I'm like, how's that possible? I'm taking care of you and, and you got something to take care of. I mean, this thing has, like, a pacifier and everything. And then when you think about Barbies, you had... Barbie and Ken. Yeah. So they were already teaching you how to be a wife. And they had a dream home. So that's how you also had to be a boss. <laughs> I mean, come on. And they had the kitchen set with all the cookware. Right. <laughs> no, well, it, and the Corvette. What's interesting, though, <laughs> is I wanted a doll baby that had a baby or whatever because I loved my mom. My yeah, mom was yeah, such yeah. a mom that she took care of us. So yeah. when she was washing us down and feeding us food, I wanted to be like mommy. So yeah. I think my desire came from wanting to be like the person I love the most. And that was yeah. my mom. Yeah. Can I just yeah. say real quick, every time Judy goes back to Jamaica, when she speaks, <laughs> her accent comes out. I want to be like mommy. Like, mommy. it's so cute though. Mommy and daddy. That's how Jamaican myself. Don't, don't stop that. That's our Jamaican queen. Yeah. Over here. I love it. I just think every time you go back to your childhood or when you talk about your parents, it's beautiful to see how your accent comes back into oh. it. I love that. Yeah. Well, yeah. Prayerfully, they'll be on the show one day. Mommy, come on down. <laughs> <laughs> no, but see, like, yeah. that, that's where it came from. Like, yeah. And, and it, it, it's, it's funny to me because I don't think I desired to be a mom. I think I just desired to be like my mom. Mm. She was mom. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't know that that was a title. I didn't know that that was something that I would grow to be. Yeah. I just had a, a desire to do what she's doing. Yeah. And see her everyday routine. Yeah. For and me, I, I always wanted to be a mom. Yeah. I knew, like, I'm supposed to be a mom. I actually wanted to be a mom way before it was time for me to be a mom. So my mom had to slow me down a little bit. And I think that that just comes from, like, 
me loving to love on on something mm -hmm. you know and I always heard that the truest form of like love or connection with someone is your child mm -hmm. you know you carry this 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 seed and it grows in you and it becomes this life that you're responsible for and that was really like what I wanted I always wanted it now I'm a mom and um, I love it, <laughs> but let's just be but. honest, it comes with a real challenge yeah. and it also comes with a real sacrifice. It is no longer about you, it is about them. Absolutely. And hold on, not only just about them, but you have to be the healthiest version of you in order to impart in them yeah. mm -hmm. what they need, which is a lot. Yeah. For me, I honestly, same thing. I always had this nurturing instinct in me where I was just like ready to be a mom. Even at 14, when I didn't even know how to be a mom, <laughs> I, like, I, I, I remember when, no seriously, I remember when I was in high school and dating and mm. I actually got pregnant at an early age. Mm. But when I got pregnant in high school, I was like, I can do this, I can do this, like I was ready, but then I did not move forward with that pregnancy because I wanted to wait until the appropriate time because I knew that I wasn't fully, I, even though I felt like I was ready, that feeling was there, mentally I wasn't quite ready. Mm -hmm. And I knew that there was other things that I needed to do in order for that to manifest at yeah. that time. Yeah. But when I got pregnant at 21, it was the most beautiful, gratifying feeling that I had yeah. and still have to this day. Like I love yeah. being a mom. Yeah. It's so beautiful. And yeah. again, like my son, he taught me how to love. Mm -hmm. My son transformed me into the, the woman that I am today. Yeah. And I just think that that mother instinct mm -hmm. comes with also, or it transfer into being a wife. Yeah. Because if you can be a mom, then you can be a wife. True. Sometimes you know? your husband is like, you're cutty. I don't want to, I shouldn't say that. We can't say it. This. Say well, it. it's a nurturing <laughs> component to, to a husband. So there mm -hmm. is an element of loving your husband um, with that compassion that you would, your your son in some cases. Yeah. Because I think husbands adapt to their mom and love their mom that they can respond in a way that if you're gentle, yeah. kind, loving, yeah. Um, yeah. caring, and nurturing, it does transfer over. But I gotta ask, was there a desire for you to be a wife? Oh my God. There was. For me, I mean, I was married at 25 the first time to my son's father. And I, I desired that even before we made that step, I desired to be a wife. I've, I've always knew since I was a child, even when I was dreaming of my dreams and, and what am I going to do in the future, I always knew it came with three kids, a husband, <laughs> this beautiful mansion. I knew that I'm made to be a wife and God told me that even when I got divorced the very first time, I remember God saying, you are a wife. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, Lord, if I am a wife, because that's that's something that I thrive at. Like, I love uh, nurturing and catering and just, and, and going through the process of learning how to honor and submit yeah. to my husband. I, it's just, for me, it fills me up. Yeah. I don't, I can't, I don't think I could ever go back to a day of not being a wife. But I remember God telling me, you, I created you to be a mother and I created you to be a wife. Mm, that's why I that for you, because that mine's different. You know what? <laughs> I, mm, I grew up in L.A., so that should just she sound like me saying give you the foundation <laughs> of um, <laughs> what my example was. <laughs> um, I've always wanted to be a wife, but there was one point in my life where I said it's not gonna happen. Not with the not with what I got around me. It's just not gonna happen. So I wanted it. But I got to be honest, I started losing faith in the fact that that could really happen for mm, me. Wow. And once I gave up my, I was going to say my desire, but ladies, I was thirsty. Once I gave up my <laughs> thirst, hey. my husband came along. Oh. And I was like, wait, I'm not thirsty and now you're here? Yeah. I mean, it was serious because I wanted it so bad. Yeah. And God was like, Mm, you want that so bad that you're willing to really take mm. anything yeah. and that's not what I want for you I want you to desire what I have for you yeah. so I said okay Lord fine I'm going to uh, 
I'm gonna give up what my idea is of this husband, this man in shining armor that's gonna sweep me off my feet and be this perfect person. And I'm going to find who I am in you and I'm gonna trust that you know what I need. Because I thought I knew what I wanted, but my wants were changing every other yeah, day. Yeah. And I think in LA what tends to happen is that we have Hollywood. And Hollywood has painted this amazing yeah. picture that the man is this, he does that, everything is perfect, the mansion is already ready, the, you know, it, it's like, it's not real. Like, marriage is something you have to work at. Yeah. I had to realize I'm not marrying my idea. I need to marry what God has for me. Your purpose Ooh, made. God, my it's purpose made. your purpose made. He doesn't have to come perfectly packaged. Actually, if he comes perfectly packaged, I would return to sender because no man... <laughs> comes perfectly packaged. He may come perfectly Jesus packaged did. for you. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. But no man, for real, no man is going to come like checking off your list because your list is, if God says that his thoughts are greater than ours and and that even our, our thoughts aren't even big enough for, for, for what God has for us, even your list is too small. Well, I'll share this. Um, growing up, my desire wasn't to get married, even though my parents were married. My desire was for relationship, was for connection, was mm -hmm. to be able to have um, an exchange exclusive with someone that we could experience exclusively. Mm -hmm. And then I had, like your story, I was previously married, and that experience was horrible. Mm -hmm. And I was like, ah, this is for the birds. I don't want this. Mm -hmm. I don't, I'm not interested in going down that cycle. Mm -hmm. So the desire was no longer there. But I do remember I had an experience with the Lord that I cried out saying, Lord, this is not what you promised me. Mm -hmm. So instead of that desire that I wanted, I just wanted the promise. Yeah. And it. that was that connection, that relationship, that was that bond and that togetherness. Yeah. And then, yes, just like that, it was like, okay, I'm not, I'm not opening myself up and being available to everybody that would come knocking on my door. It yeah. was more or less finding that centeredness to hear God say, pay attention to this one. Yeah. So it's safe yeah. to say that we here are the modern day mom, wife, boss. Definitely. Yeah. Because there's no limits. I yeah. don't feel like, you know, I mean, there's nothing wrong with the stay at home mom. Like, listen, I take my hat off to you, but that is your desire. And I have, and, and I think it's safe to say that we all have different desires, but yeah. we still commend that stay at home mom. But let's talk about how you balance all of yeah. that. Like, yeah. how do that fit in with being a wife and yeah. being a mom and still being able to get up and go to work? You know, I have to say something know on what you just said so um I have a, a neighbor of mine and she is a stay-at-home mom so every time I go and take my son out for a walk I see this woman with her children mm -hmm. and the other day I ran into her in this very solemn sadness that was like a cloud that was looming over her and I stopped and the kids played for a minute and I was like you know what's what's going on and what I could see was that Although, and what I picked up from our conversation is, although she's a stay-at-home mom, she's not really fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Because at some point, your children have to flourish, mm -hmm. and you do too. Mm -hmm. So what I think is beginning to happen for her is she's a stay-at-home mom, but she's not fulfilling her purpose. Yeah. She's, her purpose as a mother is being fulfilled, but I don't think that she's finding that that joy anymore in what is for you because just because you become a mom doesn't mean that that's it. Yeah. yeah. There's more to it. So I don't mean doesn't mean you got to be a boss and you know go and conquer the world, but do something that still makes you happy, not just being a mom. You but know. But sometimes for some people. Because that's her story. Yeah. But for some people, some people, I know people who just like, Love I just want to get married and have children. But what and happens when the kids go? I'm telling you, I know people who retire into this and they're comfortable and content in that. So I don't, there's, I don't want to confuse anybody. Like what you do, again, it's your thing. And of what course. we do is our thing. Of course. But at the same time, I do just want to, I still commend this thing. Because that's a lot of work. To stay at home and raise a home, children, kids, and still take I care of them, that's 
that's a lot of work. I would say this. If I had the opportunity to just stay at home, um, I definitely would take it, but it would come with structure. Because what, well, maybe I should say work from home, mom. Yeah. <laughs> work in my own situation, work yeah. in my own thing, create my own schedule, take lunch whenever I want to type, type schedule where it's not I have to leave the home to be able to create the income necessary to have the home and maintain the home. But I think there is a, there is a, a deficiency because a lot of moms aren't in the home. I think that way. And I'm not, this is just my opinion. This is Judy's opinion. This is not subscribed from anywhere. And I, I say that because I, I think children thrive when they have that in-home care Absolutely. nurturing experience. Um, Listen, and the protection that, that, is a, that is available at home yeah. until they get to a certain level that they can consciously articulate and understand um, the, the pitfalls in life that when they step out into the world they know listen I've been trained up yeah and this is this is how this is going to go the thing is though is that children grow up children become us I mean so for me in my personal opinion is that at some point if you are not even if you're a stay-at-home mom it's not that it's it's still finding you, like you said, finding what also makes you happy because your kids are going to go to school. They have to. Then your kids are going to grow up and they're going to leave the nest. And then you're going to find yourself there and you're no longer considered a stay-at-home mom. Now you are a mother. Stay-at-home wife. But you're a stay-at-home stay wife. men don't like their women going to work either. So I'm just saying for a certain people and certain audience, everybody don't want to work. You know what I mean? So we, it's... It's just a defining line with they your purpose that. is your purpose, but maybe that is their true purpose for them. Everybody is different. They say they don't want to work, but they want that bag of money, though. Like, yeah. I'm you, I've met some oh people. And I, listen, that's not me at all. So, you know, I, but at the same time, I've met certain people who are content with just that. But I want to talk about us. How do we balance that being a mom? a wife and a boss like how do we balance our time help prayer <laughs> help honestly i have help thank you mama because i have help we have help if you do not have help lord pray for some because then pray for me because i can use your mama to come over this weekend girl hold on now she got ours this weekend <laughs> <laughs> hold on nobody shares their nannies nobody shares their nannies or their help okay the help is for but but it's help you know like for me it's been help my mom is definitely a help I don't let my kids go with nobody to be honest so if it's not me if it's not my husband it is my mother or my sister or somebody very close to my family but I what I love about my mom is how much she believes in me and her vision for me because like we talked about Everybody, especially our parents, they have this vision of who their children are going to become. Mm -hmm. And my mom, she has never given up on her vision for me. Mm -hmm. And not only her vision for me, but what she knows is the desires of my heart. Mm -hmm. She knows she raised an L.A. girl. She knows she raised an actress. She knows she raised a woman in entertainment. And she raised a little version of her mom. Which is, like I said, my mom is, although she's a great grandma and everything else, my mom is running a business. My mom is, is, is helping people, you know, in the community. She's constantly, she has been an amazing example to me on how to be a mom and a boss. And, and you know, that's, that's been, that, yeah, that's that too. But, <laughs> but I'm going to really give it up to the fact that as a mother, she is always supportive of me and she's always doing whatever she can to like keep me motivated so that I don't get because I'm, I'm not a person who can stay at home and just live. I, I think it's amazing for who can. But for me, there's like a fire on the inside of me. And if that thing is not constantly fanned with more flame. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not worth what I need to be to anybody in my life. My husband, my kids, nobody, because I do come first, yeah. to be honest. And it trickles down. If I'm happy, my husband's happy. Yeah. If my husband's happy, my kids are happy. If my kids are happy, we're all happy. Oh, yeah. And that comes from me being able to be all of those things. A wife, a mom, and a boss in my yeah. own right. We need some help over here because our 
our parents are on the East Coast, and unless Andrea, my sister-in-law, flies in town, sometimes it's really difficult to find someone. Mm. Lena's always like, drop that baby over here! <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I'll do it. And then it never happens, because something's always happening. So, yeah. I need prayer. That's how I balance things. I pray, because I need help. And yeah, listen, I'm not mad at that. For me, um, balancing being a mom, a wife, and a boss, I think that because I got pregnant at such a young age, 21 to some is young, but because I got pregnant at 21, I already had that hustle mentality. Like, I'm so, I'm so ambitious. Mm. I don't know how to just chill. <laughs> like, I really don't. Like, sometimes my husband has to say, babe, you don't always got to be doing something. Just sit down somewhere. Mm -hmm. But my, I'm constantly on it. I'm constantly like, okay, well, I need to do this. I need to do that. Because I have the mentality as if I don't do it, it's not going to get done. Mm -hmm. And this is how I'm going to be successful. And it's not that I'm just creating work for work. It's just I know my purpose. And I know what, that, what I was called to do, so I just don't let nothing slow me down. So, me being six months pregnant right now. Where? Six, six months where? 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 Six months pregnant and still working. Yeah. And yes, of course, how do I balance it with prayer? But also, coming to LA and just having me and my son, and granted, his father was there, but honestly, my balance came from building a community of yeah. people. Yeah. I, listen, my friends know that if Lena was coming, her son was coming too. <laughs> and I'm not ashamed of saying, hey, can you watch my son for a little while? Hey, mm -hmm. can because I take care of myself. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to allow myself to get so burnt out that I don't have time to be a mom or mm -hmm. I don't have time to be a wife and I don't have time for my career because these are all the things that God has created me to do so I'm going to balance it and take some time for me but also use my community of people around me yes that's what it's given to us for it take they say it takes a village and it really does and I'm all about putting my kid in school <laughs> 100%. <laughs> I'm not the mom that's supposed to at home and teach the kid, you know, from kindergarten to 12th. No, no, not doing it. But I think that that gives children an independence as well. Absolutely. Listen, my baby is three years old and she is at school from 8.30 in the morning till 3.30 in the afternoon. She loves it. Yeah. So even if I have withdrawals, sometimes I miss my baby. I think about it. When I see her come home from school, she is so liberated in the freedom that she yeah. had in that day. She She's learning her herself yeah girl she's finding herself she has to understand that there's other outside authority other than just her mom yeah. and her father she has to understand that she has to find herself in the world yeah. you know what I mean so what's very interesting to me that I would like to know is it has a what like the drive that we all have is it different than what you saw your mom or your family dynamic like you 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 chasing this dream of like wife mom boss is that was that displayed to you or is that something that you can say that that is is taken on on your own life and you didn't have an example of that my mother is very my mother was a a, a teacher for 18 or more years wow. in Jamaica but then when she moved to America mama became an RN mm. and she worked through school and paid her way through school. That to me is courage and strength. That's and a that wise mom incredible. boss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's very incredible. When it comes to me taking the step to go along this route, mommy thinks this is a hobby. Mm. And for that reason, the, the drive and the desires, although they, they come from wanting to be happy and wanting to create a life for yourself, um, it's a little different because mine is a lot of uncertainty. And in a traditional in a traditional Jamaican home, it's one of those things where you go be a doctor, mm. you go be a lawyer, mm. you do something in the medical profession where I'm not doing that. So my, my drive is different, but I, I take courage and strength from what was important to my mother. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like she did it and she was successful, is yeah. successful. So I draw strength from that, knowing that, yeah, I can be successful. Mm -hmm. I just have a different blueprint. Yeah. And I have no reference point except to know, be strong and courageous. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What about you, Lena? Uh, for me, I think 
of course, you know, growing up and I've seen different sides of my mom. I've seen her when she was going through her, um, her, her sicknesses and when she couldn't work. And I've also seen sides where she did work for a couple years and then something happened, right? So, I, but I've never seen like a, like an entrepreneur boss type mm -hmm. in any of my family, to be mm -hmm. honest. Mm -hmm. um, I think me and my cousin were the first ones in my family to even ever graduate college. Wow. So um, for me, I just because because what I saw, I felt like there was a lack. Mm -hmm. I wanted more. Yeah. And I and I just always had this belief that you can be a mom. You can be a wife and you can still be a boss. I always had this belief that you can be all, all of these things. And, and I'm going to speak to the fact that when I said that I had got pregnant at a young age, the reason why, what, so I was going to keep the baby. Mm -hmm. So I'll talk about Taiki. At 21, when I got pregnant, everybody was like, do not have this baby. You are going to end up like society and never graduate college. You need to, you just need to just don't have it because you're on such a good path, right? Mm -hmm. But I remember saying to a lot of my family, a lot of my friends that I'm gonna make you a liar. Mm. I am going to be the one person that have this baby and still be successful mm -hmm. and, 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 and still be a wife and still be a boss eventually. I wasn't going to allow my circumstance to stop me. Mm. So yours so was about proving. Mine was, it, was, it wasn't even about, even though it was about making them a liar, but I, it was always going back to what my God told me. Like, you're not your mother. You're not the father or this or that person. You're Lena, and I called you to be this person, and you're going to do those things because God has given me so much drive and tenacity mm -hmm. in everything I do. I never quit. Mm -hmm. I never quit. So no matter how hard it is, I'm going to show you it can still be done with a child and it can still be done with a husband. Because Hollywood will tell you, don't have a baby. Oh. Don't be married. Yeah. They do not praise that in Hollywood. Yeah. But guess what? I'm the one with two kids now. Amen. Second marriage, which is successful. Yeah. And a boss. Hello. <laughs> can we that? Like, that was good, girl. That was good. <laughs> um, it's funny because when it comes to Hollywood and mom, wife, boss, it, it, it really is unique because for men, well, you can do whatever. You know, it doesn't matter what industry you're in. You can do whatever you want to do at whatever point in your life you want to. But women have to be strategic. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't do this at this window, then you're cut off from this opportunity or this experience. Or you don't get to have the experience the way you would, I would want to have it. Mm -hmm. So it's unique that you point that out because, yes, Hollywood will make you feel pressured into doing certain things or fitting the box. And I think yeah. it's really important that you identify what your picture yeah. frame should look like yeah. well, and not a, worry about the next. I have a personal experience to kind of like piggyback on that. So um, at, at one point in my life, I had um, I started doing this show, The Real Husbands of Hollywood. And I remember you on that show. Oh, really? <laughs> I remember you. I When I got that show, I was single, and I was mingling, <laughs> and I was free to go, okay? Now, mind you, that's a very male-dominating show. Yeah. Like, that, the women on the show, we are in and out, right? Mm -hmm. So, season one, good. Season two, good. Season three, good. Season four, good. Season five, uh, I'm pregnant mm -hmm. and married at this point. Mind you, the character that I play on the show is very far from a pregnant yes. mother. So when they heard about this, mind you, they cut me immediately. I was cut. Mm -hmm. Like, well, scratch the scene, wow. scratch the character. Mind you, this was the fifth season where they were giving me the most. Wow. Right? Mm -hmm. So they said, well, you pregnant. They didn't care to see me. They didn't care to know, like, well, how pregnant are you? It was, they heard pregnant. They heard wife. It was like, mm, it doesn't fit anymore, mm -hmm. right? Broke my heart. I will never forget. You know, my husband, he said, babe, maybe this is just a time in your life where God wants you to be happy for where he has you. Mm -hmm. The very thing you've asked for, the very thing you've been praying for, if they don't think, 
it's meant, and maybe this is just a time for you to enjoy your pregnancy. Yeah. I heard him, but I was hurting on the yeah. inside because it made me feel like, so I'm not good enough. We can't put a flowy shirt on. It can't <laughs> like, why isn't, why does that all of a sudden mean, you know, you're, you're out. Right. So God made a very incredible encounter out of nowhere. My husband and I chose to have lunch on Sunset Boulevard. The creator of the show happens to walk by. Mm -hmm. He looks inside and we're like, hey, hey, we connect. And I was like maybe three months, four months at the time. Mind you, men here pregnant, you big, faces, they, they, they don't see that you can it's still look like this, okay? okay. They don't yeah. see it. <laughs> so they, to them, it's like pregnant out. When he saw me, he was like, let me take some pictures of you. Mind you, this was like four days before production started. Wow. Four days. Took pictures of me. I did my best to tuck her in there. <laughs> and, and, and they had a meeting with me the next day. All men in the room, literally. And I felt like such a... I was on display. Mm -hmm. And the display was, hmm, can she still be sexy? Hmm, can we still pass this off? Hmm, is she still going to be the hot chick? And honestly, by the grace of God, they were like, you know what, Raquel? Let's do it. Season five, I was fully pregnant oh. with my daughter but I say all that to say this sometimes men especially in this industry they can't see beyond their idea yeah. of what women are mm -hmm. and and I felt so empowered to be on that set still try to be sexy yeah. still try to have Ooh, my sex thank you are. girl <laughs> still have my my confidence but also know that there's no shame in becoming a mom yeah. there's no shame in becoming a wife if anything I felt more empowered I felt more sexy and I felt more worthy to be on that set than I ever did any other That's season cool. I remember hearing this quote the richest thing you can do is have children. Wow. Mm -hmm. Agreed. How do you leave a legacy if you do not have children? That's right. Mm -hmm. you, you don't. Mm -hmm. You don't. You cannot. Like, what are you passing down? Yeah. What are you continuing? Yeah. How is your purpose being truly fulfilled? Yeah. Because you have to know that you aren't, your purpose isn't about benefiting you. It's to benefit others. Yeah. So, you I think you have to create these children or I mean some can adopt or in some way but I just I feel like there is a need to yeah. create a legacy yeah. within your generation yeah I'll say that but I just want to say with all of these hats that we're that we're wearing do your kids suffer at some point or do your husband suffer like how do you balance that Mm, that's good. I'll go start. <laughs> you know, here at the Johnson household, we do things as a family. <laughs> Most days, we all always together. Hey, now. No, we, we definitely, my husband's desire for us is to have a family unit, a family company, an entertainment company that when we work, we work as a unit. Yeah. And I love him for that. Yeah. I know I get on his nerves. <laughs> But I think he secretly <laughs> likes me around him 24-7. <laughs> but even with Mateo, right now, he's not in school. So we alternate. If I'm working on something, then Pierre has Mateo or vice versa. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have a nanny that will come in from time to time. Or we do have a village that we can lean on. So he doesn't he doesn't feel the, the, the woes, I think, as most children could um, but as far as our household right now, we are in a balanced state that I think, I think God is preparing us for what we are walking yeah. into. Yeah. So a lot of it is we are always around each other because when the time comes where we're not around each other, we need to have this foundation yeah. locked. Yeah. And I know, um, I know Pierre's going to be in South Africa very soon. That wow. is hands down. Yeah. And I want to know that, hey, boo, you got to you do what you need to do. I will be there in a month. We're going to make this a, yeah. a whole adventure. Yeah. So we don't look and we don't anticipate any anxiety, suffering, or anything like that because we're structuring our life to to be within each other's presence even yeah. if we're working. Yeah. yeah, that's good. I would say for me, um, we're, we're pretty much the same. We do everything together. Like, and I love that. I love that. It is a codependency. Like, he won't eat if I haven't eaten. 
Like stuff like that gets on my nerves. I'm like, babe, did you eat? <laughs> no, I didn't eat. I'm like, well, I ate. So you know, <laughs> you know like that's you kind of, I will sometimes. It's like, babe, I've been out all day and I ate. Like, why didn't you eat? It's like we have that like codependency with one another. And um, so, and I don't think the kid, the kids don't suffer. They love this. Like yeah. they get, I mean, literally I've, I've been on set with my kids. I've, they know my audition process. They know when I'm out in the, in the prayer room, like it's, it's just, we embody so much together. Yeah. And, um, I think that if, if anything that I need a lot from my husband because of this entertainment business is I do need a lot of, um, comfort and a lot of reassuring and a lot of like cheering on because you know I don't get up at nine or, or get to work at nine and leave at five like this is a constant you know always you reassuring what do you mean just the reassurance baby you got this keep going oh, yeah. it's okay if this one didn't work that's because this no is closer to your yes like you know if I leave out of an audition and I don't feel like I did the best he's like He's calling me the roll in the car. Like, he's just always, you know, because it's, like I said, it's not a Bank of America job. It's not a it's not a walk in at nine, leave at five, and, 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 and take your lunch break. This is constantly, like, yeah. I'm constantly thinking about what's going to be next. I'm constantly trying to open a new door. I'm constantly, you know, trying to fulfill my purpose every single day. And yeah. so, if anything, I look, at, I, I look at my life and I thank God that he brought me someone who understands mm -hmm. and someone who is always cheering me on so I would say that my career and my life as a mom and as a as a as a, a wife and a boss I'm thankful for the foundation that God is building it on yeah yeah I think for my family I mean just like y'all we are so family oriented like we have our family outings, date nights. We literally this year, my husband even incorporated like family check-ins and family mm, meetings. So that wife and husband and child and career never mm. conflict, you know what I mean? Like for the first time I have to ask my son, am I doing a good job? Wow. <laughs> like, How old? 12. Oh my God. Am I yeah. doing a good job as a mother? Like I want to know how he feel and where he stands. Mm, that's good. Um, but I think we, uh, just like you guys, we do a lot together. We mm -hmm. spend a lot of our days together. But my, my husband is a consistent working actor. So even when he's not home, He's calling in like yeah. let's let's pray together. Yeah. Let's you know the type he go to school yet today like stuff like that. So yeah. he's so much involved, and I think that I don't we don't allow it to suffer because mm -hmm. we constantly one thing that we incorporated when we got married was to do check ins amongst each other. Mm -hmm. So. I would say to my husband, how am I doing as a wife? Wow, that's good. And then he would say, how is he doing as a husband? We would literally list pros and cons mm -hmm. to make sure the things that we're not doing right to make sure that we're doing it. We, yeah. we're working on work stuff. Yeah. So do you like go the next meeting and use the same list and kind no, of identify? Like no, we, we create a whole new list. Yeah, yeah, that's good. No, we that's create good. a whole new list and keep each other accountable. Like, cause you said last month, mm -hmm. you were going to, especially with me being pregnant right yeah. now. Yeah, oh my gosh. I'm gonna be honest. Yeah. What's Todd doing? Listen. I'm drink to that. No, I, I, I'm 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 actually really proud of myself, y'all. Really? I, I I think I think the spirit of my husband is truly in me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's good. Because my baby is so calm, which <laughs> makes me so calm. Yeah. yeah. Like I'm so easy going. Like I'm not even just saying it. You can ask him, and he'll tell you. I'm not. I don't complain as much anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm so chill. Like y'all do whatever y'all do. It's we. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, but honestly, I think you have to have that support in order to have balance so you can't in order to make sure no no nothing suffer the kids don't suffer you don't suffer the husband don't suffer and work don't suffer there has to be some type of structure so mommy's pregnant right now so we're going to pick up some slack with cooking and cleaning yeah. and you know helping her out in those areas and because mommy's pregnant you know we want to make sure that her career is still going and yeah. she's not just lying dormant because she's pregnant. No, mm -hmm. we know that she's a hustler yeah. and she still want to work, so let's support her. Yeah. At the same time, 
I'm pregnant. I still got to take my son to basketball practice and make sure his schoolwork and all those things. And at the same time, still make sure my husband and I yes. are where we're supposed to be. So we make sure date nights are so mandatory in our house. Mm. We have to have date nights. We have to have them times where it's just like, how's your day? You know, what's going on? Like, you just have to have those check-ins. And I think that's how we balance it in such a way where it works for us. Yeah. I think intimacy too is so It's so important. important. Yes, it like we need that. Yeah. You know, that intimacy because sometimes the career can be on our mind. The kids can be on our mind. And we, we, we suffocate the intimacy of our relationship. But that is so important to keep that really at the forefront, okay? Yeah. Like, you know, sometimes it's like, before you're married, you get challenged with all these things, yeah. and then you get married and you start to feel like, you know, you're neglecting areas that are so necessary and so important. Intimacy yeah. amongst husband, wife, man, woman, it is so it really important. Is. And it once again, it's a foundation that keeps building. Yeah. So in that intimacy, we're finding ways to continue to satisfy each other, continue yeah. to make each other happy, continue to remember like we come first so that everything else can like grow yeah. and flourish. Right. It's the watering of the seeds, the seed comes with the tree and then the tree comes with the fruit. Yeah. And I think that that's even the way I would put wife is the seed. Mom is the tree, boss is the fruit. Mm, that's me. good. I like that. And so, and what advice can we give to our audience who are a mom, a wife, and a boss, or who's desiring to be that mom one day, that wife and that boss, boss mm. one day? Let's leave them with something. I, I you know what? It's funny because uh, Major is is engaged, um, and I went and had a conversation. Well, me. Major is an amazing recording. Yes. Yeah, he's an artist, that. singer. Mr. Why I Love You. Yes. Um, and <laughs> Cue the song. <laughs> and in that uh, meeting, we, we had given a toast, and it was amazing because I kind of surprised myself what I said, and I'll say that now. My advice would be to um, to write out your goals, dreams, and aspirations, um, desires in pencil. Hmm. Because what happened is when you meet your husband, all of the things that you want, it needs to modify. Mm -hmm. It needs to change. How you would want to do something, how you would want to be a mom, you got to have the ability to be flexible to alter it slightly. Yeah. Where you're not so stuck and it has to be this way and if it's not this way then it can't go that. It, yeah. it has to happen my way or it's not going right. And I think that when you when you dream, so to speak, with pencil, then you have the ability to to know what you want, but be prepared to be flexible in how God manifests that in your life. That's good. That's good. Um, so for me, I would say that um, nothing in life is unattainable. So if you go after it and you continue to remember what the end goal is, mm -hmm. take it one day at a time. Don't look at social media. Yeah. Don't live on the social media timeline. Mm -hmm. Live on God's timeline yeah. for you. Stop trying to be what everyone else is or has accomplished or achieved and feel less than. Find your pace and allow God to reveal to you in time the wife you're going to be, the mother you're going to be, and ultimately the boss that you're going to be. It's a day by day journey. It is, you never arrive to this place. I think it's always evolving. You're always growing. And um, don't give up on the journey because if God says that He can do it, yeah. He will. It's done. It's yeah. done. <laughs> and I would just leave with, you know, enjoy the journey of discovering motherhood, discovering wife, and discovering being a boss. Yeah. God has created you and put all of those talents in you and I think that you whether male or female are so deserving of those things yeah. so I think once you enjoy the discovery of that you'll find your purpose in mm -hmm. that and and like Judy said be flexible because sometimes yeah. God will shift things around he'll give you detours but the one thing that remains is you are going to be that and just dream big yeah. And I just want for this for this episode, because I know there are so many women out there or men 
who aren't married yet, leave your comments, leave your uh, advice because yes. we want to we want to feed into you. We want you guys to help us with yeah. different conversations or um, things for us to talk about because we want to make sure that we are just really, really sewing into you. Yeah. So thank you again for watching Soulful Sunday. Yes, we're so full of life. So full of love. So